Hi, my name is Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Trish and I am not. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of... <laughs> Are you dying to know? Because Trish is dying to know. I am dying to know. Hello, hello, hello. I keep moving my hands. And She's making noise. noise on the table and I was just said to her I'm going to karate chop up. Because it makes noise. See, that's annoying when you try to talk and there's this yeah. going. This, this is the one. So I'm, a, I'm going to try and keep my hands very still. Hmm. Still is good. I could be like a model. Like, not a model, a, a model. model. <laughs> a mannequin. A mannequin, that's the Would word. you like to do this video like this? <laughs> yeah, go on. I could do it like that. <laughs> anyway, we have a question. We do. We do. Today's question is from Susanna. Hi, Susanna. Hello, how are you? And Susanna asks, we've actually Susanna? done this. Susanna? Oh. I thought it was Did you just do that again? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Susanna yes. asks... Uh, about internal defibrillators. Yeah. Now we have talked about um, devices that you need to remove yeah, um, from times. the deceased before cremation, but this one we're going to talk particularly about it, defibrillators defib. shocking the heart. Yeah. And she wanted to know if the defibs will stop shocking once the person is dead. Like, is that an automatic thing? Does it stop? And can it shock you when you're removing it? Please tell her that answer and everyone else. Okay. Who's here. Yes, I will do. Um, yeah, so yeah, a defib or a defibrillator is different from a pacemaker. Um, it sits in the same position as a pacemaker, um, just on one side of the chest, either side. And it's quite a lot larger than um, a pacemaker. So the pacemakers is about that big, the defibs are about that big. Mm -hmm. So quite a bit bigger. And they just sit under the skin of the chest, but attached to the heart. The defib just shocks your heart when it needs to, when it goes out of rhythm. And um, when you're deceased, what's supposed to happen is whoever has put the defib in, so whichever hospital or wherever the person was to have that fitted at the time, there's a cord and everything and it's, all, and it's switched on by computer. It's supposed to be switched off. Um, is that automatic? The hospital has to be notified of the death and mm -hmm. then it gets switched off. But often they don't get switched off. They'll not continue shocking the heart when you're deceased because it just, it basically goes into, like, it doesn't do anything because it's, the heart hasn't moved for such a long time. It's not going to keep shocking and keep shocking and keep shocking. It doesn't, it's not how it works, you know. So it doesn't do anything while, you know, while we're waiting for that person to come from the hospital or the coroner's or, or from a nursing home or wherever it is that person's died. So when I get them into care and they're being cremated, we need to remove the um, defibs because it's a big battery, basically. It's a huge battery and this is the risk of blowing up the cremator and blowing off the doors sometimes. So we need to remove the uh, defib. And I don't know whether the defib's been switched off by the hospitals or they haven't been switched off by the hospitals. And the way I know if they have or they haven't is I've got a magnet. It's, um, it's a round magnet. It's a medical magnet. Uh, it's, I don't know. It's, it's just comes from a med medical facility. So um, I'll place that on the chest in the area where the defib is. And if it starts to make a noise, starts whistling and peeping, I know that hospital hasn't switched it off. And you know where the defib is because you can see it? Yeah, you can see it or you feel it if uh, the person's a bit larger and you can feel it and you'll just put that on. Or even if you just put your magnet on the chest straight away, you'll know where it is because it'll start making a noise if it's not switched off. So it'll start making a buzzy noise and an alarm noise and it just buzzes, buzzes, buzzes. And it actually that's actually switching it off. So while my magnet's on there, it's actually switching the defib off. It'll make that noise for a second or two, then it'll go quiet and that'll go mm, safe to uh, to cut the wire. So what I'll do is make the little incision to get the uh, defib out, push it out. And of course, when it's outside, the wires are connected, but I need to cut the wires because we don't go right into the heart to get the wires out. The wires get left. We just need this battery out. But if I cut the wires because I know it's a live defib and I don't have the um, magnet on, I will get a shock if I cut it off. Right. So as soon as um, I take the magnet away, it's working again. Okay. 
you know, it's activated again. So I'll put the magnet back on um, and it'll make that noise again. And while I've got the magnet in the uh, defib in my hand, then I'll cut. But I always feel like a bit of James Bondy going on here. Which wire? Which wire are we coming? There's four wires. There's four wires. There's only one wire normally for a pacemaker. A defib has three to four wires. And you go, oh. And I, and I know, because I have had a shock be off them before. Um, when I haven't used a magnet, it like pushed me back a bit, but nothing terrible. I just got a bit of a fright. So I'm a bit like, I'm a bit like that. So could it, but once it's cut, um, that defib will still make a noise because I've got one in there, the mortuary at the minute that I took out last week and it's going boo every now and then it goes boo. You sometimes yeah. hear it in our videos too, yeah, the ones that we filmed in the mortuary. Yeah, because they're in the boxes. Yeah, and there. you're used to it. You never hear it. Yeah, I forget them there. <laughs> so, yeah. so, yes, that's what I need to do. You need to put your magnet on. A magnet switches off the defib. Cut the wires. The defib needs to be wrapped in. Um, I usually put them in um, my gloves, you know, individual, you know, my gloves, my, my um, what do you call them, my gloves? Your gloves. Yeah, surgical gloves. Surgical gloves that I wear. Um, just because I put them in a container together and you're not supposed to have them touching each other, the defib and the pacemakers because it might cause a fire apparently. So I've been told, I don't know if that's true. So I haven't had a fire yet. So they're all in a container waiting to be disposed of either professionally by the, the clinical waste people that dispose of our clinical waste or I would love to donate them again to cat and dog shelters like we used to years ago but you know, maybe I should get on to some vets and see if they want them again. So mm. we used to do that. Or we used to donate them to development countries. But um, that hasn't happened for a while. So, yeah. So, yes, they do keep working if they haven't been switched off by the hospital, which is what they're supposed to do. But often they don't. So, yes, a magnet will switch it off. And, yeah. And then I just suture up the little incision that I made, put a little bit of tape on, and you never know. Mm. So, that defib's been sitting there so and it's yeah. only for people being cremated yeah yeah for uh, cremations you know families members uh, of burials may ask sometimes to have it removed they don't want them to be buried with it and that's fair enough so some families do and some families want them back mm. so i don't know why but yeah it's theirs you can have it back so yeah so it's a bit like rods sometimes you know on the bodies when they get you know how we uh, have Tim showed us all the metal parts that come out after cremation. Yeah. Families want them back for some reason. Mm. So I guess it's yeah. a part of their person. I suppose so, yeah. So yeah, so I hope that answered your question there, Susanna. Interesting question. Yay. It was. We've done it a few times. Look back, I'll um if I can find them, I'll point to a video. Yeah. Yeah. I always point in the wrong place. I think it's here. <laughs> here i'll point to a video um on that we've done it before yep. uh, about the other devices as well so you can see about you know some of the i don't know what are the other ones you've got the cochlear implant the morphine pump which sits just under the skin in the tummy area it's a really big one that one um the yes what you said the cochlear implant the pain stimulator in the back which sits just on the, uh, the cheek of your bum at the top here um, and also the little tiny ones that look like USB sticks, they are hot um, recorders, they're recorder loops for pacemakers and different things and they sit right just in your ribs here and they're really hard to find tiny little things. I don't think they would make any difference in the thingy but we're still told to remove them but they're really small, mm. like a small battery so yeah. So yeah we do remove a lot of uh, different devices but we don't remove uh, metal or titanium from the heart or anything like that because you know you get titanium heart valves if the family want them back which they've asked before that's a heart operation you need to ask them to do a heart operation in the hospital before the person got brought in because that's open heart surgery to go in and get <laughs> and not something in. you're trained to do i'm not trained to do that at all so it's like no. the dental work you're not trained to do that's right yes or no i won't uh, remove any gold teeth and I, i'm not a surgeon basically i'm not a surgeon so can't do surgical things. I'm going to put people back together. Superficially. Yes, but I couldn't do it in real life, as in I wouldn't get your arteries right and your, uh, your, your nerve endings and all of that kind of thing. Could be know? interesting. So it would be interesting. <laughs> all right, thanks for that question. Yeah, thank um, you. Anything else we need to tell everybody? I don't uh, think so. I don't think so. No, I think uh, that's, that's it for that's this it. one. Okay, yes. thanks yes. for watching, guys. Yes. See you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye.